guys and welcome back. Well, I'm going to go out this evening just around the airfield, but I've been told do not leave the car. So the plan for tonight is to go out with the Hitax scope, do some footage using the IR light it comes with, do some footage with the Sciansky K318 torch, the one that I like to use when I'm doing rimfire shooting. That will clip straight on the side of that Picatinny rail. No problem at all. Uh, I did zero this yesterday at 20 yards, so I doubt very much there's going to be anything over on the airfield within that 20 yard range, so I'm not really bothered about shooting anything. Zeroing was really easy. What I did have to do was put a little bit of black gaffer tape on the front portion of that scope uh, mount just to bring that front of that scope up because it was shooting uh, quite high. Uh, the problem with this scope, it hasn't got the technology to retain that reticle in the centre of the scope and move the image, it moves the reticle. So you might end up, if you're unlucky, to have the reticle uh, crosshairs right up in the top corner of the picture. There's ways around it, you get adjustable mounts. Uh, I didn't have to worry about the left and the right, it was just the up and the down. So I've just packed a little piece of tape under the front there just to offset that mount. So it's spot on now, um, it was a, little, a couple of inches off to the right, but I'm not bothered about that. So we'll go over, so I'll take this over to the airfield, Primarily, we're just going out to get some nighttime footage, and the good thing about that, I can stretch out to almost a thousand yards. So, we'll see if it's as good as the manufacturers say so. So, come along with me now, and uh, let's go and see what we can find. There's the fox. So, get a nice clear, so it's between those two trees. Focus is very, very fine on this. Let's try and turn the zoom. A little zoom wheel. Remember, I said it's very, very fine on this. And it does take a bit of finding, I can imagine. Oops. Oh, it's going in behind that bank there, out of sight. There it is. Let's see if I can find that zoom. So I'm just changing the reticles. I'll definitely go for the yellow, I think, on that one. It's bright enough a bit. Go 20 times there, that's 20 times zoom. Right, it's going to be a bit pixely, bound to be at that sort of distance. Go back out, right, there was another one somewhere. Just go back over to my other spotter. you've seen is the furthest one away. There's two more over here. There's one there. Just zoom up on that. Once you know where that zoom is, it's easy enough to find. There we go. There's one more. Over to his right. There we go. Let me just range those and then we can see. Right, the one you're all looking at, which is the furthest one to the left, is 97 yards. The one to the right is 90, and that one right over in the distance is 164. 97, 90. 164, that's maximum IR. Now, personally, I wouldn't take that shot on that. It's a bit grainy. Um, let's zoom it right up. That's zoomed right up. All right, you can see it's a hair, but it's not ideal. Let's just zoom all the way back out. 
as we move things then you seem to get a better picture on the zoomed out image that chap's 60 yards away so let's have a look see what it's like through the rifle so there's that there's that rabbit that we just saw that's 60 yards away and we have a battle around trying to find that zoom I think that's any feedback I would give back. It takes a bit of time to find it. There we go. That's 20 times zoom. I'll tell you what, there's not a lot wrong with that, is there? That's it, right then. So let's go to the full setting on the IR. Focus it up. Now, I did have one of those little break off rings on this. But with the Tyansky light, it won't work. Right, that's maximum illumination. And to be honest, that is struggling to see anything down there, and I would expect it would. So we're going to go on with the Tyansky light. Doesn't make any difference. Right, so turn the uh, light off. On. It's going to go. So the next one goes off, and okay, that's off. Well, I've just got back from the airfield, uh, so testing out the Hitac 5 to 20 HD scope on top of the Maverick. Um, I'll say I wasn't going out to shoot stuff, just going to go out and film it. The alternative light I had with the Cyansky K3 18, uh, I tried that a couple of times. To be honest, it didn't make an awful lot of difference. Um, compared to this, the uh, light that comes with the HITAC. The little eye bungee off the back, I took that off. I found it easier to look at the whole screen rather than having to push your face up to those bellows to see the whole screen in there. So, pros and cons. The pros, definitely the pros on this. Daytime footage is absolutely epic. That widescreen footage that you get from this is, is second to none. I think it's definitely as good as my Sightmark Wraith. I think it's even as good as the ATM 4K footage that folks have sent in for me. So yeah, daytime, can't fault it. Also in the daytime, the navigation of those buttons on the top is not a problem because you can look up on top of the scope and see what you're pressing. I struggled tonight, uh, didn't have a pair of gloves on. It's really difficult to feel those, to, to identify which button you're pressing because they are quite close together in like a crucifix shape. And the real nightmare of the night was that tiny little um, rotating rocker switch at the back for the zoom. I struggled and struggled for that uh, but again that's, it's down to practice that's only the second time I've been out with this scope. I think as a daytime scope it's absolutely brilliant as a nighttime scope short range rabbit and ratting around the barn would be absolutely brilliant. Um, as I say I took that off out of choice. The other thing I took off tonight I had to take off because I was using that other light on there I did have one of those coaster break off coasters on there which went on there earlier and I found if I put that back up I know where it's got to go I had that set on there and that was by far much easier to do that to focus and trying to fiddle around uh, getting your hand at the side of the rifle so again personal choice they're really cheap off of Amazon and I would recommend getting something like that uh, on any scope really because this one's quite nice and free to turn some it can be really uh, you've got to be quite strong to move them so there we go i hope you've enjoyed the footage a bit of nighttime footage as i promise i know other folks have been out i think robin's going out uh, lanks vernon control's already been out i watched that this evening again he was doing some close-up rat stuff i think this is absolutely ideal for that nice and light can go on any rifle Obviously, if your rifle's got dovetail fittings, you'll have to get the dovetail adapter that I did say on that daytime video uh, that they are available. So, if somebody said to me, well, I want one of those for £489 or whatever it was for doing sort of squirrel shooting, a bit of rat shooting, I'd say, yes, please, uh, where can I get it from? Look at the uh, alternatives that you've got, the Alpex, the ATM 4K. They're eight, nine hundred pounds. Um, there's nothing that this can't do that they can't do in the daytime. So I think out of the two, daytime footage, I'd go for that one. Primarily, it's a wide screen. You get the full picture. You don't get those annoying black bars down the side of the screen like you get with the Alpex, the Stella. Um, why they do it, I don't know. I have spoken to them. Why can't you do it widescreen? There's no excuse. These people can do it. 
ATN can do it, Sitemark Rate can do it. So there's no reason they can't do it. They just need to pull the fingers out and get it sorted out. I think for the money, uh, under £500, that's, that's a bargain. Uh, if you're looking at some, a cheap uh, electronic scope to do a bit of video in, something like that would be absolutely uh, ideal. So thanks very much for watching it. If you enjoyed it, I hope you picked up some tips. Uh, I certainly have. My, my main tip is don't wear gloves. And as I said earlier, these things off of eBay, uh, these little buttons for uh, putting on the, the bumpers for, for doors, they peel off, they stick on. Put two of those on the main ones, obviously the record, the power, uh, and you can put them on the, the two, the brightness controls and the IR controls. It, once you've got that crucifix of those high buttons on there, you'll know where you are. But that was a real struggle tonight in the car trying to find them. That's my only gripe. Uh, the buttons and that adjuster for the focus. Apart from that, exceptional quality for the for the money, and uh, I don't think you could go wrong with something like that. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please comment below. Uh, be interested to hear other people's comments, and please look at other people's videos. They'll all they'll all see it differently. Um, I'm an old bugger with old eyes. What I think is probably a grim picture in that. They might think it's absolutely brilliant. So don't take my word for it. Listen and watch everybody else's. Robin, Lanks, Vermin Control, they've all got one of these. Have a look at their videos and make your own mind up. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.